Good evening, everybody, and welcome. It is with great pleasure and privilege that I sit before you tonight on this beautiful Tuesday evening, February 13th, 2018. The time is 631, and I call the meeting to order. We're going to start with our invocation by Pastor Domingo Vela with Templo de Liberación, followed by Pledge of Allegiance led by Mr. Ron Burke. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the opportunity that you have given us to come together tonight. Thank you for this day that you have given us. Father, I pray for the, for the mayor, I pray for the city council. Father, that you will give them the wisdom that they need, Father, to solve everything they have to talk tonight, Father. And I pray that you will bring new business to our community, Father. I thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Face the flag, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. This time, agenda item number two, citizen comments and public announcements. Any citizen who has uh, requested for city services or other items of concern which cannot be approved or otherwise resolved by the city manager may choose to address the council. Citizens who wish to address the city council about items on the agenda will have three minutes to express their position. Please indicate agenda item number on which you wish to comment. All presentations and discussions should be directed to the city council and all questions to the mayor. Any complaints and or discussion about individuals, personnel, council members, city staff, or other persons would be out of order and will not be heard by the city council at this time. Charges or complaints about specific individuals shall be presented in writing to the city manager. All complaints of this nature must be signed and dated by the individual filing the complaint and will be addressed pursuant to Alice personnel policies. Please approach the speaker stand, state your full name and address when you begin your remarks so that the official minutes will record your appearance before the City Council. If you have written notes you wish to present to the Mayor and Council, please furnish an extra copy to the City Clerk for official files. Please direct your comments to the Mayor and Council. Although Council cannot take any specific action on citizen comments, topics due to legal requirements, they will hear the topic and council may either have the item placed on a future agenda for action or refer the item to a board commission or committee or refer the item to, to staff for study or conclusion. Thank you for your cooperation. At this time, if Mr. Mauricio Garza would like to approach the stand. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Mauricio Garza II, 500 Nair Street. I'm here um, for a couple of reasons. One, I'm asking of if you all had put in any thought into what I had mentioned earlier about the um, uh, placements of the city and stagnant elections. Um, seems like the best way to go in the interest of fairness to all of the taxpayers. Um, another thing, uh, towards the end of the meeting, last council meeting, I was impressed to see the concern and energy from some individuals from, for mistakes making. I, uh, I just dearly wonder where would that energy and concern was when our multi-use complex went from an $8 million dream to a $20 million nightmare. Um, and speaking of our uh, city manager or interim, uh, I'd like to thank you personally in front of everybody on record for all the work that you've done. You were put into a position that was not asked. You were thrown into it thanks to the controversy of government shadows and other things involved. Um, simple mistake of forgetting a page does not seem like such a overwhelming, earth-shattering uh, mistake, but nonetheless, um, thank you for everything. Um, you've got my prayers and several other people's prayers. Uh, another thing that I've been enlightened about is apparently last year there was some sort of internal investigation that has occurred. Uh, I'm very curious to know the status of it, where it's at, and possibly what was in the investigation. Um, that's something that a lot of taxpayers did not know about, that they have a right to know about and should know about it. And I hope I'm not too premature, but if something does happen today, then I guess you can always congratulate somebody in the room for being the new city manager. So bless you all. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Garza. Next, Mr. Butch Rodriguez. Uh, 
Mayor, Councilman. My name is Butch Rodriguez. I probably know, I don't know John Lemon. I don't think so, but I do in a way. <laughs> no, he's a nice man. I'm just uh, here in concern about this sewer problems that we're having on Walnut Street. And uh, I heard that it could be in the agenda for, for maybe in a couple of months or more than that, but that's fine. That's fine. Uh, all I'm concerned is that uh, I approached the city council to take a look in this matter because it should uh, be looked in because uh, us as taxpayers, uh, we cannot even go outside and enjoy a good day without that raw smell of sewer. And it comes from Walnut Street. Now, I have another issue here about little boys and girls that walk through there that are going to Noonan. That is my main concern because we're talking about their future and what's going on with this flu, influenza, for them to get sick because of, in cost of that raw sewage that's coming out of a manhole on Walnut Street. I have, uh, I have my opinions on that and I wish the council could take that in consideration and if we could get help for the whole neighborhood or the school that those little kids should not walk through that raw sewage or smell that foul smell. And I'm pretty sure I'm positive that we could get help from the city council or mm -hmm. any funding. I hope that we could get help with that problem with the raw sewage spilling into the street and uh, have that very bad feeling for all the neighborhoods. I guess that's uh, about it and I hope you take this into consideration. We're doing this for the future. It's not for us. It's the future of the little boys and girls and the future of all the people that live close to that thing and uh, we're trying to see if we could get some help. I appreciate it very much. Thank you, Mr. Rodriguez. Okay, at this time there are no other citizen comments, so we'll go on to public announcements. Mr. Molina, you have anything? No, I don't. Mr. Crisp? Not at this time. Mr. Burke? No, ma'am. Ms. Carrasco? Not at this time. Okay. At this time, I would like to remind everybody um, our Black History um, Committee is putting on together our Black History uh, program that's going to be at CBC on the 24th at 3 o'clock. So save the date. They're working really hard for a great um, um, program on African Americans during war times. So that should be awesome. At this time, I'll, I'd also like to thank uh, a very special person, Patrick Thomas. I would like to thank him for taking on the emergency management coordinator position. Um, it is a position that is scary um, when a lot of people don't know, but when you're elected as mayor, I didn't know till my first day in office, um, you are also the emergency management director, which means in cases of disaster, you are the woman <laughs> in this case. Um, and you assign a coordinator that helps you along with all the city staff and everybody. Um, I was fortunate enough to have um, been blessed with Hurricane Harvey very quickly in my in my appointment <laughs> and Miss Diana Lopez did a great job working side by side with me um, and our coordinator at the time was Mr. Van Nest and of course the whole city staff that worked long hours Miss Pat was here everybody was here anybody that was working for the city was here and equally concerned um, but this position is a very unique position because it's a big position because really everybody turns to the emergency management coordinator to tell us exactly what to do, when to do it, where to do it, how to do it. Um, so it's a big job. And um, Mr. Patrick Thomas is our interim fire chief and he was brave enough and cared enough about the safety of our of our citizens that he you know what said you know what I'm gonna do this for the safety of our citizens and to be part of a team and um, I don't know it all but you know what I'll learn it and I will be by your side thank you Patrick Thomas I really appreciate it big shoes thank you not anybody can do it Very good. Um, agenda item number three. Here, presentation from the Alice Police Department regarding the Alice Police Department's 2017 Racial Profiling Data Report. 
Mayor and Council this evening, Lieutenant Sartucci, who is the patrol lieutenant, will be going over with you all the 2017 racial profiling data. Uh, this is an annual report of information that's related to motor vehicle stops um, that is submitted not only to the governing body, but to TCOL. That's correct. Uh, good evening, Mayor Council. I present to you the 2017 racial profile summary from the Alice PD. Uh, last year, we had uh, 1,109 citations where traffic stops were conducted. Out of those, there's a, this is the breakdown. And on the side, on the left column, you see the actual citation, and on the right column is the percentage out of the 1,109. The first category is Caucasian. There was 60 citation issued to the, that, that category. The next is African, which is six. Hispanic, 1,041. Asian, there was one person. Native American, one. And then Middle Eastern, there was zero. Uh, the next section is race or ethnicity known prior to the stop. Uh, out of those, 107 was yes, and 1,002 was no. The next section is uh, searches conducted. Uh, 32 yes, and 1,077 no. And then the last uh, section is uh, was a search consented. And there was 19 yes and 13 no. And this, uh, this uh, report is required by the Code of Criminal Procedure. And this is done yearly. I think this is the fifth one I've done. you have any questions? Council, any questions at the t this time? Mr. Molina? No. Mr. Burke? No. Mr. Crisp? Just a quick question real quick. On yes, um, the ones where the search is not consented, is, there, is that require for you to go out and get a warrant signed? Or how, how does that? Uh, no, those are usually where their people have drugs or plain sight or, or alcohol in plain sight, and that gives them a probable cost to search. Probable cost, okay. Okay. Uh, that, that, that's just. Can I ask Okay. Um, I have a question. Ms. Lopez, was this the report that I requested? No, ma'am. No. This is uh, something different. This is something that's required annually. Okay. Um, what you've requested will be coming to the council at the next meeting. Next meeting. Yes, okay. ma'am. Okay. Um. Any other questions? Um, just a second. Is this, is this that particular report that is required for grants? Or? I don't believe that this is something that's required for grants. My understanding is that this is something that's required under Code of Criminal Procedures. I think it's Section 2.1. Um, it's 2.131. Uh, they uh, use this information, um, and they require it from all police departments. Um, it's their way of keeping statistics uh, based on um, the information that Lieutenant Sartucci has given you, um, the race or the ethnicity of the individuals, whether searches were conducted, and whether the peace officers knew um, the race um, of the individual detained before they detained the individual. So it's standard statistics that are kept. Just a, a yearly report? I'm yes, ma'am. Okay. It's required one time annually to the governing body, and then um, they report it also to uh, TCOL, which is Texas um, Commission on Law Enforcement. Correct. Very good. Okay, then my questions will be for the next one, I guess. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, agenda item number four. Consider and act upon adopting a resolution authorizing the submittal of Homeland Security Program grant application number 3557001, replace and enhance equipment for regional hazardous materials response team, designating city manager as a city's authorized official with the authority to apply for, accept, reject, alter, or terminate a grant on behalf of the city, providing assurance that in the event of loss or misuse of grants that the city will return all funds to the office of the governor. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Good evening. Um, Patrick and I have been working on the 2018 grant application for the State Homeland Security Program. That program, among the projects supported by that state program, are projects which improve an applicant's ability to prevent a threatened or an actual act of terrorism, 
projects that will enhance our ability to protect our citizens and assets against threats and hazards and also will enhance our ability to mitigate loss of life and property due to catastrophic events. Some of the program specifics include um, no required match, it's a reimbursement grant program, we are required to submit with the application a resolution from you. Uh, the minimum to apply for is $2,550 and there's no maximum. The grant deadline for this particular program is February 28th, and if funds are awarded, the grant period will start September 1st of this year. The process for this grant application involves the Coastal Bend Council of Governments. They have a Homeland Security Committee with a scoring subcommittee. The scoring subcommittee is set to meet this Thursday to rank all of the applications that have been submitted through e-grants. The subcommittee will then give its recommendations to the entire Homeland Security Committee, which generally adopts the subcommittee's uh, recommendations. The entire Homeland Security Committee then forwards its recommendations to the entire Council of Governments membership. Then the recommendation is sent to the state and the state will do its own evaluation. And then sometime in September we'll know what the state's um, <coughs> award announcement is. Our project is to purchase six self-contained breathing apparatus air monitoring equipment, scene lighting, decon showers, an evaluation and rehab kit, and a hazmat identification sampling kit. All of this equipment will be kept in the hazmat response trailer. The written quote that Patrick got from the vendor for purposes of the grant application totals $77,912.27. Among the special considerations for this funding program are, um, one is that if we're awarded a grant that doesn't cover the entire project, we'll have to revise our project scope and our project budget. And we'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Council, Ms. Gosko, any questions? She answered most of them. You said this was uh, no required match, and then it's a reimbursement. Yes, it's a cost. Grant. You answered pretty much everything. Mr. Burke. Um, currently, how how well fixed are we for equipment at all dealing with hazardous materials? And uh, uh, let's suppose, for example, a train derailment with. So we are we are a little uh, uh, equipped. Some of our equipment is are starting to age. Uh, we we've received equipment from this particular grant program before in the past, and uh, some of that equipment starting to age and and, and uh, its uh, service life service life is coming to an end. So some of the stuff that's on here, like the decon showers, things like that, those are, are they're, they're going to replace older equipment. So some of the stuff we already have, it's just not. Uh, uh, it, it, we need to start planning to replace it. So uh, before it continues to, or before it goes out, and we were left without that, we wanted to be able to have that uh, a plan to replace it all. So we, we are we are limited in what we can do. Some of the stuff that we are asking for in this particular grant is going to enhance and and make our capabilities a little bit better. But uh, we do have some basic uh, 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 equipment that can help us get through a, a situation like that. And we do have uh, uh, mutual aid agreements with other departments that have more advanced equipment and, and we uh, communicate with them regularly. Any other questions, Mr. Burke? That's fine, thank you. Okay. Mr. Crisp? Well, yeah, one of them was have we applied before, but you, you answered that one in that question and you said that we have received it in the past. At what level, I mean, if, if it's known, did we apply in the past and, and receive? Uh, here we're applying for, I'm going to say, just under $80,000. And how, is that a large number in the grand scheme of things? Um, now, I imagine for some larger cities, that's not even close to a big number. Uh, but is it something that we can 
expect to see? I mean, what's the likelihood that we would actually get these funds? Well, that's kind of hard to answer without knowing what the other agencies or the other cities have applied for. But I can tell you the last time that we applied for this, it was about 60 something thousand dollars. Um, that included the, the trailer and a bunch of equipment that needed to go with that. Um, so it's, it's, it's likely that we could get this grant uh, I, I, without, without knowing what everybody else is applying for and what other projects they've put together. It's kind of hard to, to, I mean, I think mine's the most important one, but the committee might not think so. So right. they've got to rank those and, and we're, you know, working with uh, agencies like city of Corpus Christi, city of Portland, uh, some of the other uh, departments that have received this particular grant for this uh, hazmat uh, uh, program is, uh, I think uh, Claiborne County's received some money before. Uh, I know Portland has. I know uh, Annabelle has. Uh, so th we're 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 competing with other other agencies that are either our size or even bigger, like Corpus Christi. And then when we applied for the sixty, how long ago do you, do you roughly? I don't I don't know that question. I don't know the answer to that question off the top of my head. Uh, but uh, it's it's been probably about four or five years, maybe. Yeah. About four or five years, give or take. And the life expectancy of some of this stuff. I know we haven't used the majority of it have we well we have used it uh, we use it annually uh, uh, we try to use it annually some we I think there was one year that we didn't get to to get the training in but we the, the equipment that we use we use for training as well because we want to make sure we know how to use it okay uh, so sometimes taking it out setting it up putting it back down uh, things start to break things start you know start to fold and uh, get creases things like that so uh, some of it's been used on scene some of it's used on training uh, thankfully, the the most expensive part of that, which are those level A suits, have still are still good, and we're not having to replace those because those are really pricey. But um, th those, though, we haven't had to use those. I think we've used one in training, and that was pretty much it. Okay, that's it. Thank you, Mr. Molina. Any questions? You have six SCBAs that you're purchasing or wanting to purchase. Yes, sir. Okay, how many do y'all have? Currently, we have 27 air packs. Uh, SCBA is what we call air packs, uh, and some of them are starting to age. Uh, uh, so in here, one of the next agenda items is going to be a, another grant to try to replace all of our air packs. But this particular one isn't really replacing any. It's just adding to our, to our, our equipment uh, cache. So right now, the way it works is those air packs need to work with the suit that we use uh, to enter into a, what we call a, a, a scene that's immediately dangerous to life and health, so an area where you can't breathe the ambient air. Uh, so that th these air packs would be assigned to that trailer and would respond with that trailer so we wouldn't have to take a pack off of a fire truck uh, that's and that's been so this program's kind of developed uh, we've learned either going through training or going through incidents uh, where when we first developed the program it was it wasn't we, I, wanna, I don't, I don't want to say not thought out completely but we learned and and so that was one of the challenges that we were facing is uh, if the trailer goes out to a, to a scene and in out you know on 281 we've got to take a fire truck just to be able to get the air packs off of that fire truck so what we're trying to do is make that trailer kind of self-contained so we take the trailer and everything is already on it we don't have to depend on other types of pieces of equipment to make is that it just happen. a tank and the regulator or tank regulator spare bottle and the mask okay and what do the, what do they run each you know those are six thousand and some change i'm not too sure okay. that's all i have okay um Ms. Barbara, just for our citizens and, and everybody in our audience so that we could understand, um, can you please explain the no required match and a reimbursement grant program? Okay. There's, um, in some grant programs, um, the funding isn't 100% and the applicant is required to pledge or commit a dollar and or in-kind match this program doesn't have that requirement, but we will be asked if we can't, or the Homeland Security Committee will ask or um, ask the applicant, um, can you still proceed with your project if you don't get full funding? And that's where uh, the special consideration comes in where we'd go back and revise the project scope and the project budget, mm -hmm. or the state could ask us the same question. Um, so that's what the match is. A reimbursement, mm -hmm. you don't get the, the money up front mm -hmm. when the award, the grant is awarded. You have to expense the cost and then submit paperwork 
through your finance office for reimbursement from the state. Okay. And uh, by when would we get the answer? Did you say September? Probably the state will uh, issue award notices probably in September, which is the beginning of their new fiscal year. Yeah. Okay. Council? Well, go, sorry. go ahead. Barbara, sorry. excuse me, I have a question. Uh, does every grant do, uh, that we process go through that same uh, system with the council of governments uh, or just selected ones? Not all grants do. Uh, home, state Homeland Security does, and the next grant that will uh, talk to you about the justice assistance grant or the criminal justice grants go through that same process but with a different committee through the COG and both grants are administered through the office of the governor who has a Homeland Security division and a criminal justice division other grants don't go through the Council of Governments thank you excuse me sure. for Council, any other questions? No? Okay, very good. <clears throat> so, Council, I'll entertain. Yes, I'd like to make a motion to consider uh, to act upon uh, adopting a resolution authorizing submission, uh, submittal of the Homeland Security Program Grant uh, number 355701 and uh, for the replacement enhancement equipment for regional hazmat. Very good. Can I get a second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And any opposed? Okay. So the eye ha the eyes have it. Motion stands as stated. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Agenda item number five: Consider and act upon adopting a res resolution authorizing the submittal of Justice Assistance Grant, the JAG Grant application number three five three zero four zero one aged and car mobile camera replacement for the traffic and patrol division and for the interdiction officer designating the city manager as a city's authorized official with the authority to apply for accept reject alter or terminate a grant on behalf of the city providing assurance that in the event of loss or misuse of grants that the city will return all funds to the criminal justice division of the governor's office mayor and council uh, this is the justice assistance grant administered through the office of the governor's office the purpose of the justice assistance grant or JAG is to reduce crime and improve the criminal justice system the minimum to apply for is ten thousand dollars the maximum which is set by the Council of Governments Public Protection Committee is one hundred and sixty six thousand seven hundred and seventy dollars there's no required match. This, like the agenda item before, is a grant reimbursement program and requires a resolution. The grant deadline for this project is February 20th. If funds are awarded, the grant period will start October 1st of this year. The process for grant applications is similar um, as the previous project. However, the committee that reviews these projects is the Public Protection Committee through the Council of Governments. Um, we're waiting to hear when we will be asked to present this project before that committee. Again, uh, that committee makes a recommendation to the COG membership, which then sends the recommendations to the state, and the state does its own evaluation of the projects. Our project is to purchase 15 in-car mobile camera systems for the patrol and traffic division and one for our highway interdiction officer for a total of 16 systems. These in-car mobile camera systems, in addition to our officer's body-worn cameras, store data which can later serve as evidence in the prosecution of criminal cases. The written quote that Lieutenant Sertucci obtained for purposes of building the budget uh, for this application totals $97,143.04 for the 16 systems, including installation. Again, the special consideration, if grant funds are awarded and don't cover the entire cost, we'll have to revise our project scope and our budget. The 
systems that the officers currently have are at their end of life cycle. Um, they've had to have several, about six of them in the shop for repairs, replacing video cables, audio cables. Um, and so um, that's the basis for this request. So we can get new systems uh, to back up the support that the officers have using their body-worn cameras. Council, any questions, Mr. Molina? Sorry. Any questions? No, I have no questions. <clears throat> Mr. Chris? Yeah, so these uh, 16 cameras, it looks like they run about, with installation, about 6,000 roughly each per unit. Yes, sir. Um, now, th these are obviously going to be far better as far as clarity and, and so forth. Am I correct in assuming that, or is it the same standard? Uh, they'll probably be, they'll be, they'll be in high definition. They'll be in high definition. Yeah, st standard definition right now. Okay, and and this is a grant. I know you've been you've brought grants before us for JAG before. Yes. We, we see them quite often. That's a great uh, great thing. Uh, but have we applied for anything along these lines before? I think we did. Uh, the video we did the video server video two server. years ago. Okay, that's what I thought. Okay. And then last year, the crime scene and accident reconstruction software. Okay. No, that's it. I was just curious about that. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Burke. No questions, Ms. Carrasco. Thank you. Okay, so is this the, the the JAG? Does this go by the standard CJD requirements? Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Criminal Justice Division of the Governor's Office. Okay, so in order to to qualify, we have different r reports and regulating we're supposed to be doing, correct? Yes. Okay, so the Uniform Crime r Report, we are current on that. Yes, we are. Okay, is that we're submitted monthly? They're submitted monthly. Okay. Is that um, open records? I think it is, yes, because yeah. it's, it's sent over to the FBI and uh, they publish the reports annually. And where can we find those? I don't, I don't know. Yeah. That's a, uh, records would probably be able to answer that question. Records handles that information. Okay. Okay, any other questions, Council? Thank you very much. Thank you, Hector, for preparing these for us. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate Barbara did most of the work. She, mm -hmm. she does a lot. Right. Thank you, Ms. Barbara. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. At this time, Council, I'll come Tina. I'd like to make a motion uh, to approve the resolution authorizing Submission of a Justice a JAG Grant application number 3530401 uh, for aged in-car mobile camera replacement. Okay, can I get a second? Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No opposed. So the ayes have it. Agenda item number five stands as stated. By Mr. Burke, thank you. Agenda item number six, consider and act upon ratifying the submission of a 2017 FEMA Assistance to Firefighters Grant F AFG application submitted on February 2nd, 2018 to replace 29 self-contained breathing apparatus for the Alice Fire Department, designating the city manager as the city's official, authorized official with the authority to apply for, accept, reject, alter, or terminate a grant on behalf of the city. Good evening, Council. This this particular agenda item is asking for, well, I guess, rat ratifying. It's an it's an application that we've already submitted, and uh, because of the deadlines on the grant and the way Council's uh, uh, the elections and all that uh, played out, we had to submit the grant before there was a Council meeting that could happen. So uh, we're coming back and asking for permission, I guess, and coming back and asking for permission to apply for the grant. Um, this particular grant is through the Assistance to Firefighters Program. Uh, it's a federal grant, and uh, it's to replace all of our air packs. Uh, as I mentioned earlier in the previous item, uh, some of our air packs are starting to, to deteriorate, and, and they're reaching their end of life. Uh, we started with almost 30, some 32 air packs, I believe, and we're down to 27. Uh, some of them were just were damaged beyond repair or, or non-repairable. Uh, as a matter of fact, this week we had a uh, Monday, yeah, Monday, yesterday, yesterday. Um, the, day, the week's going by really fast. 
Uh, yesterday they were out doing, uh, we, ha we have to hire a third party company to come in and inspect our air packs annually. And uh, that company came out and we, we had to get four air packs and place them out of service until they could be repaired. Uh, so I'm waiting on quotes to, to be able to try to get those fixed. Uh, so my point is that our air packs are starting to fall apart and we need to replace them. So this was a grant uh, that was open and uh, afforded us that opportunity to be able to try to grab some federal money to do that for us. Uh, it's 29 air plaques. The grant program will only uh, award number of riding positions that you have on your vehicles. So if everybody sat in not every one of our fire trucks, we have enough seating for 29 people. So okay. that's what the purpose of the 29 air packs. There is a match on this grant. It's a 10% match. What we're asking for is $262,450. Um, our, our share, or the federal share, would be 238591 and our match would be 23859 Now, this, uh, our match was accounted for in our current budget, so we have monies set aside to be able, if we were able to, get, if we do get the grant, the monies have already been set aside for that. Okay. Council, any questions? Ms. Carrasco? No. Mr. Burke? No. Mr. Chris? Mr. Molina. Very good. I don't have any questions. Thank you. So I'll entertain a motion for agenda item number six. Mayor, I make a motion to ratify the submittal of the 2017 FEMA Assistance for Firefighters grant application uh, submitted on February 2nd, 2018 to replace uh, 29 uh, self-contained breathing apparatus. Um, for the fire, for the Alice Fire Department. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Agenda item number six stands as stated. Motion passes. Agenda item number seven. Consider and act upon authorizing the submission of a project information form to the Texas Water Development Board, the Clean Water State Revolving Fund for Wastewater Collection Infrastructure Improvements. Mayor and Council, as Council prepares, I mean, as staff prepares for a presentation, um, I wanted to give you a, pre a brief synopsis of what is going to be presented to you all this evening. Um, in working in budgets, there were goals that were identified with from the Council, one of those being um, attention to infrastructure. Um, in October, uh, the Public Works Department finance, uh, engineering, and administration began assessing the needs of our community when it comes to infrastructure. Uh, the focus was on wastewater because it had been some time since wastewater infrastructure had been looked at. Um, the team is composed of Mr. Demetrio Duarte, who is our Assistant Public Works Director. It also included Mr. Smiley uh, Valverde, who is our Superintendent, Joe Sines, who is here this evening as well, um, our Construction Superintendent. Joe Salisbury from Engineering, um, Ms. Reeves with Grants, and Mr. Ramos from Finance. They've been able to identify four areas in town where there's a critical need to replace wastewater infrastructure. As they work through the presentation this evening, they are going to identify the areas, talk a little bit about what is being proposed, and um, after Demetrio's presentation, Ms. Barbara is gonna walk us through uh, the potential uh, financial assistance that we will be seeking for these programs. Thank you, Ms. Lucas. Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, Council, City Staff, good evening. Good evening. As just mentioned by Mrs. Lopez, in keeping with Council goals, uh, one being infrastructure, uh, the City of Alice Public Works Department in connection with administration, finance, and grants have been working since October on identifying wastewater infrastructure projects there, that are in need of immediate attention. Our team, like just mentioned, identified four aging wastewater infrastructure areas identified are composed of concrete material, which indicate a minimum of 50 plus years of life. The replacement of wastewater lines will improve and benefit over 1,100 residents, some commercial, and two schools. The four areas were identified and prioritized based on high call volume and repairs due to the aging infrastructure. We've tweaked this a little bit, so um, bear with me if I lose um, anybody here. Again, the areas identified are due to the volume of service calls and the age and material of the existing infrastructure. Project improvements will encompass additional areas of the community as these next four areas are improved. 
projects will be completed by city crews who are trained and experienced in these areas of infrastructure. This is going to be our special projects uh, department. Cost summaries per project include costs should they need a rise to bid out scopes of work. The first area that uh, the team identified was the Palo Blanco area. We will see improvements to uh, Hill Avenue, Newberry, Palo Blanco, Escobar Street, as well as Farrell Avenue. The completion time projected for this project is six to eight months. The next project is Peyton Avenue and 3rd Street. We're looking at improvements on 3rd Street, Craig Street, Peyton, and Bruce. And we're looking at four to six months completion on that project. The next one is the um, Walnut and 3rd Street project. We're looking at improvements on 1st Street, Main Street, West Main, Walnut Street, and 3rd Street. And the fourth is going to be the um, South Adams and Hobbs Avenue. Looking at improvements on Rankin, up here on top. Also on Adams Street, South Adams, Hobbs Avenue, and Nair Avenue. I'll take questions at this time on the construction portion, uh, unless y'all want to wait till um, Barbara's done with the financial. Council, you want to proceed for Mr. Blanchet right now, or let her proceed, and then we okay. can ask the okay. questions. Okay. Very good. Okay. Thank you. Mayor and Council. Texas Water Development Board has a financing tool which can assist with implementing the project that Demetrio just described. That financing tool is the Clean Water State Revolving Loan Fund, or as we call it, CWSRF, which, which is partially funded by the Environmental Protection Agency, or EPA. Eligible projects include planning, acquisition, and design, or PAD and construction of wastewater treatment facilities, wastewater collection systems, existing wastewater facilities, stormwater control, as well as other projects. Funding is below market fixed rate uh, interest rates. Uh, principal forgiveness for qualifying disadvantaged emergency and green projects up to a 30-year repayment period, no maximum funding limit, multi-year commitments, and access to loan funding year-round. The first step in accessing this financing tool is the preparation and submittal of a clean water, state revolving fund, project information form, or PIF, by March the 2nd. And as you can see from the flow chart, once you submit your PIF, Texas Water Development Board and TCEQ evaluate the projects. Then Texas Water Development Board prepares a plan called an intended use plan, and they uh, list all the projects that were submitted and they rank them. When that plan is published, and the draft plan is published early summer, We'll be looking out for that draft plan to see where our project is included and how it's been evaluated. Um, the Texas Water Development Board solicits public comments and questions on the draft plan as well as questions and comments from the applicants. Any comments received are reviewed and then uh, Texas Water Development Board prepares a final IUP and submits it to its board, which approves the IUP the end of the summer. The next step is that Texas Water Development Board issues letters of invitation to the highest ranked projects um, to apply for financial assistance. In essence, a loan application. Start your loan application. Um, the highest ranked projects generally are given a deadline to get that application turned back into Texas Water Development Board. Um, 
Texas Water Development Board then reviews the loan applications and makes a funding commitment and then the borrowers or the applicants close on the loan. We feel this is a, a, a viable financing mechanism for a project of this magnitude. Uh, this process involves not only internal city team, but external team members as well, financial advisors, bond councils, and then of course, Texas Water Development Board, the Attorney General, et cetera, as far as the loan application. To elaborate a little bit of what Barbara was talking about, the key um, and what we're asking the council to consider tonight to meet that March 2nd deadline, the importance of that March 2nd deadline is to get um, the project information form uh, to Texas Water Development Board to meet the deadline for loan forgiveness. Loan forgiveness is very similar to a grant. It is forgiveness of the principal. There are uh, two components that we're looking at to hope to meet. The first is meeting the components of a disadvantaged community, which could give us up to 30% of that loan amount forgiven. Um, there is a formula that Texas Water Development Board uses. It is essentially taking the annual median household income based on census data and uh, taking into account the cost factor per household and plugging that in. Preliminary estim estimates right now are indicating that we do meet that threshold. The second component um, that could qualify for additional forgiveness to the principal are green components. Because the lines that we are looking at to replace will completely be replaced, we will be upgrading. Um, there could be an additional 15% of forgiveness to the principal amount. The components that we will be submitting for consideration are, of course, going from concrete to PVC, um, upgrading the manholes from existing brink, brick manholes to fiberglass, uh, emission controls, which right now we're having to uh, use vacuum trucks uh, pretty regularly, so there wouldn't be the emissions from those trucks and reducing inflow infiltration to the wastewater plants. Um, the total project cost that we're looking at for the four areas is in your packet. Um, it's on page 10 of the project information form. For the four projects that we are looking at, we're looking at a total of $4,057,710. Uh, Again, this is the entire principle that we would be uh, looking for. It does not necessarily mean that that is ultimately what would, uh, would come to the um, final closing of the loan. Uh, as Barbara mentioned, these are below market rate interest loans. Uh, the interest rate will be uh, calculated as you get closer to uh, closing the loan. Everything um, that is being presented to Texas Water Development Board in this PIF includes all the planning and design. This would be a turnkey operation. Um, it includes acquisition of any land of which we will not have to do because these are in our right-of-ways. It includes the design and the construction. Um, on top of that, we will also be requesting from Texas Water Development Board to use a force account, which would be another way for us to be able to save money. A force account is essentially us using um, our municipal employees to uh, proceed forward with the construction, the rehabilitation, and the repair and demolition of the lines. Um, the goal and the key, um, of course, is to begin to move these projects forward. Um, we will also be looking at other funding cycles as they open, other grant opportunities as they open. Uh, CDBG is something we will be looking at for 2019-2020 and also U.S. Department of Agriculture. Um, we are also being very careful that when we submit this project scope to Texas Water Development Board that we don't box ourselves in. While these are the four areas that staff has been able to identify um, as they continue their assessment throughout the city, there may be other areas that present themselves. Um, also, with what we are asking for, um, if there are monies left over, if there is anything that can be uh, used to another project, that is something certainly that we will take into consideration. This is a first positive step in a good direction for our community, 
um, in speaking with staff today, we were trying to determine when was the last time we had looked at wastewater infrastructure. Uh, we've done a lot of water line replacements throughout the city. Uh, the estimates that we were receiving was 2004. 2004. 2004. As mentioned, uh, the improvement to the residents is a little over 1,100 residents. There are two schools and commercial areas um, that will be impacted as well. The enrollment numbers for those schools um, are uh, Signs Elementary, who have, uh, they have approximately 527 students and 70 people on staff, and Noonan Elementary, who has uh, 361 students enrolled and uh, approximately the same number of staff, about 70. And I'd just like to add that budget page that uh, Diana uh, mentioned reference to it has to be sealed by uh, an engineer. And before Rudy Mora left, he had been working on the budget with Joe Salisbury in our engineering department. He sealed the budget. And then if you approve our submittal of the PIF, then Diana will sign on the other side of that budget page. And um, this is the same process that the Alice Water Authority is following for a um, groundwater project under the Drinking Water State Revolving Fund. And they will be talking with you further about that project and other projects um, as the months go on. They'll be setting up meetings with you. Earlier, I'm sorry. Okay. Earlier this evening, you heard from Mr. Rodriguez, who lives in the Walnut area, and it is one of the um, the projects. While they were presented as one, two, three, and four, that does not necessarily mean that is the order that we will address. Uh, for now, we do know that Palo Blanco will be one. Council, Ms. Carrasco. I'm excited and I thank you for everyone's hard work and, and thinking outside of the box and looking for grants to fund some of our infrastructure that we desperately need. And I thank y'all. I really do. Thank you. Thank you, Diana and Roland and everyone, all staff. Thank you. Mr. Burke? Yes, also uh, very glad to see this and uh, very excited about it. Uh, reality being that uh, federal government is putting more and more responsibility on mm -hmm. local areas to handle their own infrastructure issues. So this is a very, very enthusiastic move on our part. Uh, one question I have is, uh, and you might not be able to answer it, and I, that's fine. Uh, once the grant's approved, what the lead time, the f time frame before things are shovel ready to go? What are we talking? Is there any extra time needed, or will we be pretty much on schedule to, to we're move. The actual construction time we're projecting to be 24 months um, to start October 2020. 2020. So the planning and designing yes. would occur sure. before that. Sure. So, But construction in October of 2020 is what it, we've yeah. been yeah. projecting. Um, Dealing with any state entity, there are very long, arduous processes you have to get through. So it'll be 2019 before we know exactly where we stand as far as award. However, given the state of our infrastructure and the critical need, we find ourselves in a position where we don't have the affordability to wait. We are going to continue to work very closely with finance and our financial advisors to start to determine whether we will qualify for something called a reimbursement resolution, which is essentially us working with Texas Water Development Board, explaining to them the critical need that is here, and while we work through this process, the understanding that we may be able to reimburse ourselves for the work that's already there. On the Palo Blanco project, there has been one emergency uh, line replacement already that we've had to expense, and we certainly don't want to, uh, to displace residents in any way, so we will do all that we can to keep services going. We're, we're hoping to be, have our project ranked among that priority listing, so we get one, we're included in the first round of invitations um, that go out in September or October and then planning 
at least 60 days to put a loan application together, um, which puts us into the beginning of 2019. And um, if the letter of invitation has a deadline, we certainly are, uh, are going to meet that deadline to get the loan application in. So we're projecting um, the summer of 2019, finding out yes. if a loan application sure. was um, approved. I know the, the word loan is a scary word because you are essentially going out for debt. We will work very closely with financial advisors to evaluate our debt capacity. Uh, but the key um, advantage to this type of program is the principal forgiveness of 30% and that additional 15%. Um, the uh, life expectancy for these new replacements will be anywhere from 70 to 100 years. So you are impacting future generations um, in the city of Alice. Did that answer your question? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Any other questions, Mr. Ford? No, ma'am. Okay. Mr. Chris? I just, you know, um, again, want to go along the lines of thanking staff for putting this together. Um, infrastructure is very important uh, to just existence. Uh, a lot of people look at a lot of the extras that we have throughout the community as the quality of life, but uh, don't play off the, the fact that when you flush the toilet and it goes away, it stays away, is quality of life. And the fact that we're looking into improving all aspects is, is very important to every member of this council, every member of the staff, and every member of the, that, that is employed by our city. Um, so, you know, this, this is a very big step. It is a long step, as stated. Um, anytime you ask for money, because essentially what we're asking for is uh, 1.6 million dollars when you say four million dollars and you're roughly going to get 40 i'm just saying 40 uh you know it could be 1.8 million if you say want to say all 45 of it um just to be given to us you know sometimes you have to sit back and wait when you're talking about 1.6 to 1.8 million dollars um so uh, the citizens need to understand that we're not going to stop just because this process takes time we're going to continue to serve as they have done 1,500 uh, foot of line across the front of Science Elementary because it was an emergency repair. We can't stop. We're going to keep doing what we need to do. Just because this takes time doesn't mean that we're going to take the time to, uh, to make it happen. That's where uh, the, the city manager and, and Barbara and some of these others and the financial uh, director uh, come in play where we start talking about the, uh, um, what was it, I'm going to get it right, the reimbursement resolution that allows for, for our staff to work, to run that 1,500 foot of line that falls into this project, and then later on to get those funds back. However, that's two budgets away mm -hmm. when we start thinking about. Yes, that's sir. two budgets away before we start seeing that funding coming back at us. Uh, so it will make uh, for some crunches uh, in time, but in the end, um, we're looking at, um, what was it, 20,000 linear foot, roughly? It's a, just um, shy of five miles. Just shy of five miles of uh, infrastructure that this proposal will take care of and with addressing uh, citizen concerns that have been brought forward. So I thank y'all for that. Now, going back to this force account, um, I think just a little bit more clarity sure. on how that actually works for us. <coughs> so we're going to use our city staff. Mm -hmm. We're going to pay our city staff, but we're going to be able to pay them out of this money Correct. that comes from here. Right. So um, in the uh, proposal that's going to Texas Water Development Board, we went ahead and included in the event that we have to bid specs out. We need to have someone design something for us or they don't approve a uh, force account. That's included in there as well. But essentially, you are using your municipal employees to do the work for you. What Texas Water Development Board is going to review is that because they are essentially giving us monies, they want to ensure that the staff that is doing the work is, is certified. Um, our special projects crew uh, is an amazing crew. If you all have never had an opportunity to watch them work in conjunction with maintenance and construction, they really are amazing at what they do. Um, they have all the certifications and licenses. They've undertaken projects of this magnitude in the past with water lines. These are all positives that will go towards the application and hopefully Texas Water Development Board approving a force account. Um, in the project scope as well, we went ahead and included labor costs for one additional crew. 
that will have to come into play. Um, and uh, as Demetrio mentioned, as he talked about each project, in totality you're looking at anywhere from 18 to 24 months to complete. Um, as we move forward tonight after, after council decides um, if everything is, is good to go, there is the next component and step to this, which is education to the public. Um, letting them know where we'll be working, how we'll be working, when we'll be working. And the goals of the, the team and of staff is to, to complete the project, have as little disruption to residents as possible, but in the end, make that big impact to the residents who deserve it. Thank you. Mr. Crisp, any other questions? No, she had touched the fact that we were going to actually employ more yes. uh, uh, staff here in, in, at the, with the city to get this job done. So. It's a great thing. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Molina? Um, <clears throat> well, Chris kind of, uh, sorry, Pete. <laughs> Pete kind of touched on my question about the staffing while our folks are kind of doing the work. And they're, they're already kind of running kind of, kind of uh, ragged right now, you know. So once these, uh, you know, like what's going to be happening while they're taking care of this, and then you're still having these other problems going on. So as long as that's kind of, we will do our best to, to balance, um, which is why the, uh, the additional crew is going to certainly help. Um, the purpose of special projects is to only work on new construction. Uh, maintenance and construction is literally maintenance, uh, maintenance issues. They work in tandem with one another, and with the reduction in force, it has been challenging, but they've done an amazing job in keeping up with what needs to be done. Okay. What were the, the time frames for uh, Walnut and Adams? The last three projects were um, anywhere from uh, four to six months. Uh, each one? Yes, sir. Okay. Any other questions, Mr. Molina? Good job. Long time coming. I appreciate it. Thank you. Needed. Yeah, I would just like to say that's. it gives me great pleasure, you know, to be sitting with this uh, team, this entire room of people who have um, put our, our, our citizens' welfare first. Um, and worried about what's underneath versus a plaque on the wall. So I take great pride sitting uh, beside people that, that really think of people and not plaques. <laughs> um, so that gives me great pleasure that we're actually going to move forward, hopefully, with this project and, um, and take care of our citizens that's way past 50 years in the making. Um, with that, you know, the whole new Water Infrastructure Finance and Innovation Act, is that something that we could possibly look into the with the brand new, I, the, what I Trump has put into it? Yes. Mm -hmm. I've, I've looked at it before. I'll have to go back over okay. the information. I think it's a loan program, but I'll be happy to look back. Added. Some of them are loan forgiveness mm -hmm. and no interest. I, and some of yeah, them are they there. are. There's a. I think they redid something, so we could possibly look They're into that. I'll be yes, happy to. As we mentioned before, we're going to seek every avenue, um, right. not just for wastewater, not just for water like uh, AWA is doing. We'll seek sidewalks. We'll right. seek park improvements. Anywhere that we qualify for grants and funding, um, now is the opportunity to take it. Sorry about that. That's okay. <laughs> Weird. With the uh, the impact of Hurricane Harvey, there um, has been some discussion at the national level for uh, funding to start coming toward Texas for drainage, and that is another area that we hope to be able to start looking at um, and addressing those concerns as well. Very good. Be happy to look at that. And yeah, if you would, if you would look into that, I think there were some some mm. revisions to it here recently. Um, and of course, CDBG, that's what they were, saying, they were saying, that they would put some funds into that too um, for cities infrastructure, which gives me great pleasure again that we have um, someone looking at cities again too. Um, and we just need to reassure our, our citizens that we understand, like Mr. Rodriguez mentioned, that this is a problem happening now. And even though, like Mr. Crisp said, I'm just going to reiterate that, yes, even though the financing is taking is going to take long, but we're already in the process of fixing it and um, kind of working it backwards because we know the urgency of this, of this project. Um, so our crews, Mr. Duarte, Correct. thank you so much. They've already started working and of course our internal crew that has done the 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 numbers the crunchy numbers i really appreciate it thank you all so much so yeah. now council if i can entertain mayor seeing this as a major investment in our city and our people i take great pleasure in moving for the submission of a project information form 
uh, submission grant uh, to the Texas Water Development Board, uh, the Clean Water State Revolving Fund for wastewater collection uh, infrastructure improvements in our great town. Thank you, Mr. Burke. Can I get a second? I second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 And no opposed. Thank the you, motion Mr. stands as stated. Thank you, Thank you so yes. much. Thank you, staff. Thank you, council. Okay. Agenda item number eight. The City Council may enter into closed or executive session to discuss the following pursuant to A, Texas Government Code Section 551.072, <coughs> deliberations about real property, 3001 Old Kingsville Road, that's the Old Boys and Girls uh, Building, 10 acres of land, more or less, described in warranty D dated 9-4-1963, recorded in volume 221, page 554, deed records of Jim Wells County, Texas. And B, Texas Government Code Section 551.072, deliberations about real property, Harkins Industrial Park, 9.82 acres of land, more or less being Lot 5, and the East, 3.00 acres of Lot 4, Harkins Industrial Park, Section 5, subdivision recorded in Volume 7, page 39. Map records of Jim Wells County, Texas. And C, Texas Government Code, Section 551.074, Personnel-Related Matters. And Texas Government Code, Section 551.071, Consultation with Attorney to Review, Deliberate, and Discuss the Position of Interim City Manager Regarding Evaluation, Employment, Appoint employment, appointment, assignment, reassignment, new appointment, and duties of the interim city manager. And D, De Texas Government Code Section 551.074, personnel related ma matters, city manager position, review, deliberate, and discuss city manager applications, alternatives, processes, and actions regarding interview, interviewing, selection, employment, assignment, and establishing salary range. So the time is 7.38, and we will now go into closed session. Thank you.